Note taking for consecutive interpreting. David Violet here. We are going to take a look at some of the uh, techniques, but also the bigger picture about note taking for consecutive and just consecutive itself. Consecutive is something that's a little bit like playing a piano, I like to say in my, in my courses. It's something where you, of course, in the piano, you get to sort of do it over and over again if you're playing from a score and uh, when you do interpretation, of course, you're always waiting for the next uh, unexpected thing that comes up. The whole thing is a matter of uh, following a, a speaker who will go wherever she or he wants to go. But it is still very similar to uh, a musical instrument where it just takes a lot of practice. In order to get every number, every name, every nuance of style, every uh, logical link from one point to the next, uh, to get the right tone. There's, it's a matter largely of practice, but it's also a matter of getting down your notes so that everything is there, at least to the extent necessary to jog your memory so that you can produce your interpretation accurately, faithfully, completely, and confidently, pleasantly, and also quite quickly. It is something that takes time. You, you need to make a commitment. Say, I am going to learn this. And it's a lot like a musical instrument or it's a lot like learning the foreign languages you learned. You, you decide to do it and you just commit. Commit to the time, commit to the work because that's what it takes. But doing all that work the wrong way would be a terrible pity. And what I would like to help you with is for you to be as efficient and effective as possible so that every minute of practice is something that is working for you and uh, no part of that minute is working against you because you're working on bad habits or bad technique. I know the feeling you just are constantly having your attention divided between writing the notes and listening and we find ourselves when we're first starting this process, or maybe after many years, if you haven't really uh, stuck with it and figured it out and practiced it to the point of being proficient, the same problem keeps coming back. You realize that you've written something, but it distracted your listening and you, you did not hear something. Or you come across something on your page and you, it's a mystery what on earth that may mean. Or you are listening and as you write, you're constantly wondering, what, what should I write? I don't have a symbol for that. I don't know what to write. I'm a little bit lost. And then all of a sudden, the whole thing is starting to go off the tracks because we're not concentrating on the listening. It's a little bit like driving uh, a vehicle. You are constantly watching ahead, attentive to anything because an accident is uh, something that uh, has to be avoided by all costs and in interpreting an accident is when you end up not hearing, not listening, not registering and you will not know what to say in a case like that. All the techniques that I teach and that I will really would like to teach you in these videos, these uh, free videos on YouTube, I'm covering uh, pretty much all that I, that, I, that I know, all that I teach. Um, but I do have also a course. It's not ready yet, but I have a course online and I also uh, do coaching. And occasionally we have a free uh, practice session, a guided practice session where I, I teach. Uh, and, and one of the most important aspects of that practice session is that you learn how to practice. There is a way to practice that is most fruitful and mainly about how you critique someone, how you help someone else, and how you get someone else to help you to uh, nail down the techniques and really become proficient through practice. Today, we are going to look at several aspects of the note-taking method that I teach. The whole idea is there is a series of there's so many aspects actually, but there are a few core aspects that I'm gonna go through a few of them today. When you listen to someone speaking, 
It's a flow of speech, just like I'm speaking now. My Whatever I say will influence what I say next, and it may change my plan, even though I may have something of a plan, and speakers have it, may have an outline, but fr frequently they diverge, right? They go off and they, they will not stick to uh, even a prepared text that they may have provi provided you in the first place. So speech really is a flow of unpredictable and pretty messy um, information. It's just coming at you. And one of the first techniques that we teach is that you need to chunk it. You need to turn it into bite-sized parts, parts that you can chew, parts that you can separate off and um, make them manageable. That's true with almost any task. Break any task down, any long, involved, difficult process. Try to break it down into many tasks, many parts, and then digest and manage each part, uh, which is manageable. So in speech, the we're going to call these uh, the idea. The idea is something that means it's generally a sentence when someone starts an idea. Generally, there's something of a subject, a verb, and an object. Of course, there may be many add-ons, many qualifiers, uh, many dependent clauses, etc. But generally speaking, we can say that the idea is close to a sentence. So we're going to break this chaotic or at least unpredictable flow of speech into chunks. And the chunks are roughly sentences. And these chunks are something we'll call ideas. And we put the idea in a box on the page. I say box because we've got the two sides of the column deline delineated. And we are going to write our idea in there, and then we are going to draw a line and say, okay, that's the end of that idea. I've seen so many of my students' notes where they seem to be taking pretty good notes, but they don't draw this horizontal line under each idea. So what you have is, uh, again, the problem of this continuous flow, whereas that's the problem you want to overcome uh, during your note taking. You want to delineate the end of an idea. It's part of making it manageable. And then you may link it to the next idea, which will be below that line. And then another line to delineate, delineate the end of that idea. So the whole idea here is to break your message into parts, to draw a horizontal line under the notes for that idea, and then just keep going like that down the page and so we talk about the the idea then the horizontal line going under each idea and then we may link these together again so we may a person may uh, refer to a logical link maybe implicitly or explicitly saying and therefore this happened so the, the term therefore is an explicit logical link or the person might say, and then five years later, that happened, which is a temporal link. So we'll look at links a little bit, and we will look a little bit at the margin. The left-hand margin has a special role to play. And then earlier I was saying that the idea is pretty much a sentence, a subject, verb, object, and that will depend on the language. Some may be subject, object, verb, or even other orders. That depends, and you will need to take your notes in the way that works best for you. So we will talk about the, the SVO unit. It means subject, verb, object. And then in another video, we will be looking at how the SVO is put into uh, virtual columns, and then the virtual columns are written in a diagonal form, and so on and so on and so forth. We have uh, lots of concepts to teach, and I really would like to teach them to you. I would like you to be able to become proficient. It takes, um, in one full year of practicing very hard, I uh, was not quite proficient, at least not enough for the uh, university I was going to, and I had to do another year, so it actually took me two years. I, I know you may think that that's a very long time, 
but it's not. You know, in your profession, uh, you can find time to work on this with a colleague. There's a lot of work to do alone as well. And it's worth it. You need consecutive for the exams at major international institutions. And to tell you the truth, learning consecutive, and by consecutive, I mean with notes. You, you can't really do what we normally call consecutive without notes. So by learning consecutive, you break things down, you examine the uh, process closely, and it makes you a much better simultaneous interpreter as well. So, you know, consecutive is not only going to, with notes, is not only going to get you out of a lot of situations where the speaker just won't stop talking and you're not going to be able to remember everything. You're going to have to take notes. Not only will consecutive with notes get you out of those situations, but it will make you a much better simultaneous interpreter as well. So let's, let's move on. And I, what I would like to do is there is a video of me uh, going through some of these techniques. It was at the American Translators Association from October 20th to 24th, uh, 2020 online. And I uh, gave uh, a talk there where I went over these techniques. And by the way, out of 41 uh, uh, evaluations, I got 31 excellent and 10 good and zero fair and zero poor. So I did it. I think people were quite happy with my talk. I might show you a little bit of that in the video as well. So now let's take a look at me at that conference explaining about the technique, techniques that I just went over, going from chunking to the horizontal line to links and to the margin to SVO units. So let's get going. Here we have covered the first part of my talk. Let's go on to part two, which is how the pace page is organized. We've got, we're going to break a message into parts. Any complex thing should generally be broken up into manageable parts. And that's what we do as interpreters. And we are going to listen to each idea and say, OK, I've got enough for now. And that will be my first block of notes. And then I will put a horizontal line underneath that uh, block of notes. And then I will use links to connect those lines. These links may be logical or time links. Uh, if, if there are any, you may want to put links in there to connect them again. We will use subject, verb, object units, or for some other languages, it would be subject, object, verb, etc. And we will also write in virtual columns, which I'll explain very soon. And we will also write in diag use diagonal writing. And I would like right now to give uh, credit to Andrew Gillis, whose excellent book on note-taking for consecutive interpreting uh, helped me to formulate all of this, even though, of course, I learned it all back in 1980, mid 80s, and had read many books and taught it a lot. His book is excellent. I recommend it. So you have the idea, then you have the horizontal uh, line under each idea. But let's take a look at the idea. Let's say we have, here's the uh, Australian ambassador giving a typical speech. We could put these lines, if we're going to look at it in text, after each idea. We're going to say that these are ideas, and then they are going to be put onto the page in notes. So we have the idea. And here we're going to reduce it to just one word, which is part of the exercises we do. So look, here we've got, good, uh, good morning, everybody. I'd like to congratulate you, etc. You've been doing such an excellent job on all of the you've been doing this is one of the most important dates etc 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 so this is the way the notes would look you have uh, uh, the main idea and then you have a horizontal line under each idea as we said earlier they will then be connected using okay so it looks like that if you're using a page that's divided into two like i do and it will end up looking a little bit like that because uh, each idea will be of a different length and if you're using two columns it starts to look like that with the idea in each little box. Put a double horizontal line when you finish a major section. That's a little hint, a little, uh, little piece of information. So your links will generally go in the upper left corner of each of these little boxes 
logical links or time links. And these would be um, things like the car is too big and therefore we must downsize or the other way around, we downsize because the first car was simply too big or you could just have two things that are one after the other or you could have uh, using uh, but, whereas, or however. You are hungry, but don't eat, etc. So we call that opposition. These links will go in what we call the margin. The margin is an area off to the left. Those lines are not drawn. They're just in your mind, although in some techniques you do right, draw that line. There, so you see uh, the uh, overview with the link and the idea in each box. And uh, here we would see uh, the links as little words. And for example, the uh, wolf was lurking in the woods, but the piggy one built his house out of straw and also poor Piggy 2 also was a fool and did so. However, Piggy 3 built his on, out of brick. So that's just an example. So now we'll go on to SVO units. The idea here is your basic ideas will be sort of a sentence, a sentence made up of a subject, verb, object. So your idea has been reduced to one word in the beginning, but now we're going to put it into these uh, SVO units, subject, verb, object, or sometimes it'll actually be subject, object, verb. Depending on the language, you can adopt what works best for you. Uh, depends on the language. You see that some languages uh, are one way, some are the other. So you have these ideas in their little boxes, and then they start looking like that, SVO units. And then you will start to uh, write them in virtual columns. So the idea behind virtual columns is you and the virtual columns is something that we go to in another video for you. Um, so I hope you learned something. I know it went by pretty quickly. Uh, if you liked it, if you think you learned something, please give me a like below, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, most of all, um, tell us what you think. Uh, give us your comments or your questions. Down below there's an area for comments and uh, questions. Uh, so uh, please feel free and uh, write what you really think. Uh, and one more important thing, I have a free course on symbols. Uh, symbols is something that's very handy because you can write so fast and it has such a clear uh, meaning. So having symbols is extremely um, handy. So uh, take use the QR code that's appearing on the screen or use the code that is uh, below this video on YouTube, uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube, and um, click on that link and go to the platform where you can take a free course uh, on symbols, and I, and I hope that will help you. And so keep practicing, practice your consecutive, practice your simultaneous, use the right techniques, Take a look at the free course on symbols and I will see you at the next video.